In this video traders, we're gonna look at four key market internals that you should know about. Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. All right, so I've got for you one, two, three, four market internals that you should probably be aware of, especially if you are a day trader. Are you gonna go and wear and use all these four? Probably not, because you're gonna confuse yourself. Are you gonna go and wear maybe, you know what, I like the sound of that. How can I implement that into my trading? Perhaps you will, we'll talk about my favorite in a second. And I'm also going to do deeper content on each one of these and talk about specific strategies based on what levels and what these kind of indicators are doing or these internals are doing intraday and come up with some trade ideas and theses and strategies and setups from that. So make sure you are subscribed if you like this kind of stuff. And if you are already, thank you very much. Appreciate your support. Right, let's go. So tick index, this one's my favorite. If you've been around for a few years, you're gonna see some old videos of me talking about the tick index and how some of the strategies on there. As I say, I'm gonna do some updating versions of those so make sure you stick around but the uh, strategies have been consistent for years guys because of the very simple but effective way the tick index works so what is the tick index let's go tick is the number of stocks trading on an uptick minus the number of stocks trading on a down tick there's something like 2800 stocks uh, on the new york stock exchange and by the way it's worth noting that this is the new york stock exchange only there are other tick indexes they're called different things for the nasdaq for the dow for this that the other this is the best one in my opinion because it's broad enough to uh, encompass most most of what you need. It's not so broad that you're having too much data in. It just works very, very well. So if you take the number of stocks that are trading on down tick, number of stocks tra trading on uptick, make to minus the down ticks from the upticks, then you're left with your tick reading. Generally speaking, a reading of a thousand or more is considered extreme and unsustainable. I'm being broad here as I always am and just being generalizing. Same with minus a thousand. So the, the index is gonna oscillate between minus a thousand and plus a thousand. On most days, you're gonna see it kind of go from naught to 500, 500 to naught if you're in an uptrend, that's kind of what will happen maybe if you get a, a kind of exhaustion move you might get a move to a thousand uh, and if you get a kind of pullback you might see some uh, readings under zero if you're oscillating and doing nothing in a range you're going to see it oscillating around the zero point which makes sense right some people are buying stocks at some point and some people are selling stocks some people are buying stocks some people are selling stock if you've got a tick index that's kind of above zero all the time and the price is trending up then generally obviously you can imagine there's lots of people buying on that ask buying on the offer we're creating those upticks anyway not going to too much depth on that i will definitely do another video on that because that is my favorite of all of these and it's super, super useful. I still use it to this day. Right, Trin. Trin, I gotta be honest with you guys, I've looked at it, I've had a look and I've kind of dug it in, dug into it, added it to my charts from time to time. I've never really found something personally that I've thought, yeah, that works really, really well. I know people who do use it and they swear by it. It's also called the arms index, by the way, if you wanna Google it and find out some more about it. But it makes a lot of sense. I just think that you either pick, you pick one one of these or maybe two max and sometimes you get too crowded but anyway let's talk about what it does and again i will go through and come up with some strategies and ideas and setups we can perhaps implement into your own trading in a future video so trin is basically the number of advances uh, divided by the number of declines over so the ratio of the advances and declines the number of stocks that are up on the day and down on the day uh, all over or divided by the advancing volume and decline volume. So the ratio, really a way of looking at it, is the ratio of the number of advances uh, divided by declines and the ratio of the volume of the two. And so you've kind of got something different to the advanced declines as we look at in the moment. So you get in a situation where if you have something greater than one, you've got generally a strong declining rally because the ratio is adjusted so that the declining volume, there's more volume coming into the ones that are pushing lower, which then pushes this uh, trend index above one. So, and suggesting that if it continues to be above one, uh, and it would indicate that there's probably a lot more selling pressure coming into the market because the decline volume is higher, causing this ratio to be positive. If you've got it b uh, below one or above one, not positive. If you've got it below one, then generally that's considered to be a strong rally because the volume is coming into the advancing issues when you've got more advanced 
chances as well. So all that combined indicates that, hey, this is a good, strong rally. And now I know many of you are kind of thinking ahead, thinking what about divergence? What about this? When we look at price, when we see the trend, maybe not going uh, to fresh lows, but we see maybe price going to fresh highs. What does that mean? Yes, you've kind of hit the nail on the head and that's where a lot of these come in. And we'll discuss that again in a future video. So, so hang around, stick around for that. So trend, like I say, is a day traders index really, um, it arms index, it can be used. Like I said, I've seen people using it. I think there is a place for it, um, but it's not my favorite one. However, I'm sure we'll do some digging and do some research and come up with a video. We'll come up with some good ideas to maybe implement into specific strategies or certain strategies or certain scenarios. Okay, VIX, probably familiar with VIX guys. Uh, if you're not, it is really simply the 30 day expectation of volatility. And it's based on the S&P 500 options. So the S&P 500 options, uh, the volatility component of those, if you like, is extracted out and put into an index and that will rise and fall with the market. You could uh, quite easily approximate this by using uh, an ETF. If you wanted to, a VIX ETF, there's loads of them out there. And the theory being that as volatility increases, or sorry, as the VIX increases, the expectation of volatility increases, that may well put pressure on the market. Because as the market starts to fall, if you have looked at history, History, so the market fall volatility spikes or VIX spikes, should I say? VIX spikes because people are buying and more aggressively buying options, put options specifically to protect themselves against any catastrophic failure in the market or crash in the market. So uh, watch out for VIX. And again, this can be plotted on an intraday basis, trends plotted on an intraday basis, VIX is plotted, can be plotted on an intraday basis. These are day traders stuff only. VIX, of course, you can have plotted on a longer time frame as well. So it helps you swing traders out uh, if you are one of those guys with a longer time frame. All right, the fourth and final one is the advanced declines. I call it advanced declines. It's really uh, advances minus declines. Uh, just, it's just like a name, advanced declines. Uh, I used to use this a lot. And actually, I'm looking forward to revisiting this and researching it again and seeing if it parts, uh, puts any, plays any part in my own strategies. And if not, how other strategies, maybe it will play a part in yours. So this is pretty simple as well. Uh, it kind of not quite as complicated as the trend, but same kind of thing. And you get a, a line that's increasing. Number of advancing stocks, minus declining stocks, and it's cumulative as well. So as the prices are going up, as it's advancing, 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 you're going to see the line go up and up and up. So if, for example, let's just skip ahead slightly, but again, I'll do a more complicated video or a more in-depth video, let's try not to make it complicated. Uh, if the price is stagnating, but advanced declines are increasing, then there might be some pressure for actual price or the index to push up. If maybe, advanced declines are, are declining as price is pushing up that might be a warning sign that actually it's only a few uh, components of the index that are propping up and if they start to back off the whole thing could crumble again we'll go into some depth on that but anyway guys those are four tick is my very very favorite i like that a lot look out for that video but also look out for tick trend vix advanced declines hopefully it's been some use to you guys take care what are you doing bye bye